I have no idea if this is going to go up. I would like to, because I want to talk to people about this. Um, first one was a bit too rapid, and um, the audio was horrible. I don't know if the audio is going to be better with this one. And also, I have to figure out a way of getting rid of the auto uh, brightness levels. I had my head all, all over the place and doing stuff, and it was just affecting me. Um, the brightness is just driving me up the tree a lot more than usual. So I, I don't know if oh, I have to get into Linux more, man. Like really sit down and just say enough. Enough is enough. Um, thank goodness I started to uh, slap on some massive attack again. I was like, uh, wasn't that was it was supposed to be for the Russian strategy thing? Um. What I'm trying to do now is um, come to the realization that I have to start trying to integrate strategic, operational, and tactical decision-making in a timeline that also integrates. Uh, it is a mind-boggler that I didn't um, realize had to be dealt with. I thought each could be dealt with very separately um, because they all have their own constraints and their own um, uh, wants. I mean, uh, strategically, uh, there's certain uh, desires. Operationally, there are certain desires. And tactically, there are certain desires. And somehow, it's like a symphony or like an orchestra, you know what I mean? Trying to get these... Um, musicians all the but not really because the mus the musicians are at different levels of authority um you know like tactically it's like god you give me a you know crappy decision or you know situation to deal with and but i got to deal with it and so on and so forth and up we go so what i'm trying to do strategically is obviously win the war operational and then strategically give the operational people as least amount of headache as possible and then operationally win the operational war and then get down to the tactic you know what you mean and then operational try to help uh, give the tactical people as uh, least amount of headache as so on and so forth Oof. um and this is just this one conflict zone it's in oh, i love it I did um, take a look at the, I think I mentioned this before, and here we go with maybe the auto brightness is, uh, no, I'll, I'll try to stay over here a little bit. Maybe, you know, you know, you know what, that seemed to do a lot of uh, me going down here. Okay, look, I've taken a look at the grand campaign uh, reinforce, reinforcement schedules. I've compared it with the Tannenberg and Galicia ones. I did that way back when. I've mentioned it before. I, I did it. Uh, this is like my fourth check. There are some discrepancies. I've incorporated them into it. Uh, so what I'm doing is whatever discrepancies I saw are effective January 1915 for the Russians. It's going to be for everybody else as well. Then because I started to deviate and go, okay, I'm going to go in with a grand campaign thing and start making decisions. I went from November onwards. So anything that was in the books, reinforcement schedule wise, from that moment on, uh, six months into it kind of thing, uh, is going to be uh, worked in, which is perfect because it's exactly from November to May, it's exactly what is in the grand campaign uh, schedule. So I'm like, perfect. So I took those there. I know that's coming in strategically. I know that come January, I've got, I can tell you, I've got an Army HQ. I've got, these are after modifications, but I, well, you're going to have to trust me. Uh, eight uh, reinforcement um, infantry replacement units. I've got, uh, this is a sweet kicker. I've got nine artillery brigades at three, uh, two, three strength coming to me. I've got um, 
six one six cavalry divisions, uh, a one two four infantry brigade. Um, I've got eleven infantry divisions, uh, seven of which are going to be four fours, and um, f well, four will be reserve three fours. Hold on, Andrew Mike's hex fell down, and that's uh, not a goodie. It's not because of him. It's be well, maybe. He's trying to tell me things yet again. It's these crap dollar store uh, Velcro sticker things. I'm going to have to deal with them um, to drive me up the tree. That being said, and then so and then remember, I've got the Caucasian army uh, that's being dismantled due to the fact that the Russians uh, signed a non-aggression pact with the Ottomans. I have to figure out how to deal, get those troops across via strategic map, you know, the Black Sea, naval, all that stuff. That'll be taken care of, but I, that's not a given. They're going to be showing up on January. So I'm looking here going, where are my strength point discrepancies? And they're massive. And also um, starting to look at um, the, the board in four movement point and at eight movement hex point uh, blocks for attack and counterattack bits. And how would I be able to get supply uh, and troops via there. Remember, I was always rail is just look at blood flow. These are your, this is your blood. Um, so now I'm looking and I, yes, I've, uh, okay. We're eventually going to, we're putting in a significant, look at, okay. You can't defend forever. At least that's the way I'm looking at it. But if we things go pear-shaped, we already have auto trench lines in a bizarre way because Russia has done so well up north. <coughs> Excuse me. Fortress, 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 fortress. <coughs> like, sorry, I did get some water. We already have, and look at this, rivers, woods. I'm forgetting what Russia likes to do historically from what I've been, uh, from what I know, as in like, fine, you wanna come? We'll just go backwards. You'll stick your neck out. Um, logistically, uh, like kill your supply, whatever, and, now, and then we'll c come back and nail you to the cross. Look at this. It's just like, so, but this is paper thin. So I'm going to try to, this attack's been called off. Mandarin Mike gave me the ultra warning sign. All right, okay, I'll give you my two because they're a much more live feedback. Uh, remember, this is a solo interactive game. Oddly enough, Mandarin Mike, uh, remind, uh, one of his, ver the very first people I heated uh, live stream wise when we were doing a, an impromptu live stream he was like are you sure about this and it's in the same area uh, so I'm calling off the attack I'm going to start shifting remember Danilov and Protopopov are relatively new so they probably are a bit I know they both want to impose their will because they're new but they're still uh, like whoa since I am new I'm a little bit uncomfortable with I'll listen to other people He's been a little, he's been here longer than Danilov and he's probably said, uh, excuse me, I am, I've got nobody, no one left. Can you like stop this nonsense? Look at the longer picture. What the hell are we trying to do here, man? This is nuts. So I'm going to Fortress Warsaw. Yeah, you get, you get the, get the picture. This, th we ain't stop. There's, I'm not giving up any territory here. The Germans are the one panicking, not us. I'm panicking here. I'm gonna start flowing as much, I've got um, some re uh, replacement units. I can immediately assign to, well, not my militia, but I can immediately assign to somebody. I've got replacement, I'm going to start streaming as much as I can here, which means I'm gonna use that little shift, that little conveyor belt thing the escalator bringing troops trickly up there. I'm sorry, Meandering Mike, but Kelsa is extremely important to me. 
long term. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, remember, woods in a weird way in this game are almost like rivers defensively. Um, Lemberg, I'm sorry, I'm going to nail you to the cross uh, come spring. It's just going to take a while. Uh, so hold and support. Hold, support. Hold, support, and look at, like I said, all this fallback. I'm okay. Um, I just have to stop trying to... We're, we're going to prepare for, I think... Um, A, hold on here, six months from, um, so November, so it'd be December, January, February, March, April. Okay, so we'll, we're going to do a May attack. Oh my God. And this is good getting into historical land. There's lots of April and May attacks. So um, we'll, I, the Russians should be ready for a May attack. And that's what they're going to be preparing for. They will have a new army in store ready for them come May. Uh, what I've been doing secretly is, um, of course, he doesn't know. Nobody else knows yet. If, if things go to hell, I don't think so. Um, Alexei Brusilov will be uh, hosting my new army called Army 13. And it's going to be with three artillery uh, divisions. Look them up. But it's, that's a total of nine artillery brigades, but each division uh, is the equivalent of, they can't be stacked. They take up a hex. Um, and it's going to be called Army 13, and they're going to take Lemberg. End of. And uh, that's, uh, that's it. We're just going to, little bit at a time, I don't want to stick my neck out and do funky things. Um, thank you, Massive Attack. Because it's a weird thing. I'm not. I'm. I'm using. I'm flipping it on its arse. Like I said, uh, the November massive attack with Germany and all that stuff. Um, we'll just uh, take our time here. But I just when I saw all these fortress, I know there's nobody there, but they're built in trenches, man. They are built in trenches all around rivers. They were ages away from everyone. I've got like. An unbelievable amount of uh, retreat bonus there. Um, huh. Okay, Fortress Warsaw. Fortress Warsaw, and I'm sorry, Fortress Kielce. Uh We stay hard here. As hard as possible. All right, that's it. I hope this works this time. It's going to.